All right, Dexy and Diva Marie. Today, you channel your inner superhero, and we train to protect LJV from whatever threat it will face this Jilloween. And since today's figure review is of yet another female superhero, I figured I'd dress up as Ha! Molly Holly Chase version! Ha <laughs> ha! I bet y'all expected me to dress as Mighty Molly, but guess what? That's what today's lesson is all about. The element of surprise. Just like how I just surprised y'all. Well, I don't know about Dexy, but it sure surprised me. I think I might have peed a little when you jumped. Oh, gross! Anyways, I tried doing superhero training with Robo Tamina's, but unfortunately Robo Tamina 1 decided to use her laser vision, popped her test dummy, and ended the training early. But you know what? They did do good at lifting weights. Oh boy! Does this mean I get to watch Dexy lift weights today? He's so hot when he's working out. Oh, jeez. TMI, Diva Marie. Keep it in your pants for once, okay? But yes, we will begin with the weightlifting portion. And then we will move on to work on the element of surprise. You see, we don't know when this evil force, whatever it may be, is going to attack Lumber Jillville, much like it does every Jilloween. So we really need to focus on the element of surprise. Well. I guess Diva Marie and Dexy went to go do Diva Marie and Dexy things. But either way, I hope these future training sessions go well. I don't know what type of force we're going to be up against this Jilloween. Hey y'all, welcome to Lumber Jillville. Women's wrestling lives here. Now make sure to subscribe to Lumber Jillville for a first look at all future women's wrestling figure reviews. I have a lot, and I mean a lot, of women's wrestling figures coming the rest of this month and next month, so I'm real excited to get the reviews out to y'all, and I'm real excited for Jilloween this year too, it's going to be a lot of fun. But I am here to review WWE Legends Series 16 Molly Holly, both the regular and the chase version. And I was actually lucky enough to find them in the stores today when I went out to go figure hunting. I usually don't have the best luck figure hunting, but I had a great day today. So, without further ado, let's take a closer look at these figures. Alright, so taking a closer look at the packaging here. Now, this is the third female released in the Legends line. We already reviewed China on the channel. We reviewed Stacey Keebler, but I'll be honest, I was most excited for this release. Not only because we finally get a Mighty Molly figure, finally, after all these years, but because she's also the chase in this line. And what's cool is the chase is actually a regular version of Molly, and she does come with an extra head, so you can put that head on this body, take the cape off, and have the regular Molly Holly version. So that's a really cool feature here. But taking a closer look at the packaging itself here, it's got a really cool design. And first off, I noticed this is based off of the old Elite style packaging. So what that means is the cardboard feels a lot more sturdy and durable compared to the new style Elite packaging here. And on top of that, aesthetically, it just looks classy. I love the rustic look there with the gold um, highlight on the top. And on the front, we have that classic WWE logo with the legends on the bottom. We also have this image of Molly, which is kind of cartoony which is awesome though it's definitely a nice little touch same thing on the side and on the back we have that image again along with a little um blurb here talking about the titles that she has won and also a nice bio i haven't gotten to read through it yet but we have a nice detailed bio on the back which she's definitely deserving of and then we have the rest of the line so yeah i am going to review these as two separate figures today kind of switching out the parts and reviewing both the chase version which is the normal Molly Holly look, I guess you could say, and then the regular version, which is the Mighty Molly figure. 
All right, some overall first impressions of these figures. I mean, y'all, I'm smiling ear to ear, you know. I love what I do. I love collecting these women's wrestling figures. And it is so good to see a legend like Molly Holly released in elite form. You know, us women's wrestling fans have really wanted this for a long time because she truly was a trailblazer. And to have these two versions in front of me, it, it just makes me happy. So I'm real excited to take a closer look at these. But as you can see here, you know, she comes packaged with grasping hands and then kind of the more standard molly holly head and that's what i put on the chase version i took the cape off i put that standard head on and also put the grasping hands so we are going to look at these as two separate figures so without further ado let's take a closer look at these figures let's let's start off with mighty molly the regular version here wwe legend series 16 molly holly regular version this attire is from the March 21st, 2002 edition of SmackDown in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, where Mighty Molly and the Hurricane would face off. Now, their match would end in a no contest after a young Brock Lesnar would enter the ring and annihilate both competitors. Alright, so let's start off with the Mighty Molly head that she comes packaged with. Now, I'm going to be honest, when I first saw images of this face game and sculpt online, I really didn't think it was that good. But in person, it does look a lot better. I really don't think it's perfect, but it does a pretty good job of capturing Molly's likeness here. I really like on this head sculpt, we get a little extra sculpting here of the tiara on the top with silver paint on there. And I also really like this hair sculpt. I think they do a really good job here. I mean, look at all the detail they put into the curls. I think it's a beautiful sculpt of the hair. I think they do a good job. And I also like the shade of blonde that they used. Sometimes they use like bright yellow or white, but they went with a pretty realistic dirty blonde type color and it looks great. So yeah, I think the skin and sculpt is pretty good for what it is, but definitely not perfect. So moving on down to the body sculpt and the attire, I mean, this is the part of the figure that really stands out on this regular release, in my opinion. I mean, right off the bat, you can see that she comes with the soft goods cape, and I have to tell you, the quality here is pretty darn good. You know, they've been going with a real thin material when it comes to women's robes or, you know, soft goods as of late. But what's cool about this cape is it has a silky kind of inner line white material. On, on the outside, it's kind of like a... a shiny reflective pink material you know it's got a little texture to it that is really cool and really does add to the quality of this cape in my opinion i think it looks great we have the mighty molly logo on the back but yeah it definitely exceeded my expectations so if we take that cape off which is real easy with a little velcro fasten around the neck we can see the body sculpt itself is a pretty good resemblance to molly i think they did a good job here and the attire itself really does stand out but there are some hiccups here now, looking at the top, the top piece is completely sculpted on, and I love that. We get a nice little blend of pink with black details going around. We have on her forearm some pink gauntlets painted on, which definitely works there. And when we move to the midsection, this is kind of the stumble I'm talking about, as we have a dimpled Victoria's Secret belly button, which is more noticeable on that chase figure, which we'll get to. But here, it's dimpled. It looks like it's just body painted over, and that sucks. I wish they would have used a sculpt that has a smooth over belly button to look more accurate. But the paint detail here is nice. We have that Mighty Molly logo with black and silver accents. We have a silver triangle going down. It looks really cool. It's like a reflective silver. And the bottoms are just plain black, but they do have a bell bottom type um, appearance here, which is accurate to what she wore. And then she just has black boots that are kind of visible there. But yeah, I mean, I think the part choices here are really good, except for this dimpled belly button midsection. But I definitely think what makes up for it is the paint detail and all the attention to detail in the paint application. I love that. WWE Legends Series 16 Molly Holly Chase Version. This attire is from the November 20th, 2000 edition of Raw in Orlando, Florida. On this night, Ivory would defeat Molly Holly to retain the WWF Women's Championship. They were only given 1 minute and 34 seconds for the match. Times have changed. Alright, so moving on to the chase version head here. So the face scan and the face sculpt is the exact same between this and the regular version. The only difference here is the hair sculpt. But I am going to point out that my face on this sculpt in particular is really shiny. It looks like she was sweaty. Um, but this, is, this isn't normal because when I look at the other um, head that came with the other figure here, 
it's not all shiny and glossy. It's a lot more normal, but unfortunately that scan is printed on wonky and that's what you get with these women's figures sometimes. So definitely make sure you swap the heads out to choose the best scan possible. And this scan was printed on pretty good. So yeah, the scan and sculpt works pretty good as I mentioned previously, but the hair sculpt here is a lot more fun than I expected. I really love this hair sculpt. It is awesome. So we have some stray hair sculpted on here that go around the front and obviously we have these high pigtails that are on and they're like separate pieces which is really 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 cool. And then we have those curls. So yeah, I'm really glad they included this extra head because this is kind of the more iconic Molly look if you will. But with that being said, let's move on to the body sculpt and the attire on this chase figure. Alright, so as far as sculpt goes with these chase versions compared to the regular versions, the sculpting is always the same. The only thing different is the accessories and paint application. So yeah, the sculpting is all the same and works well, but unfortunately with this figure, that dimpled belly button really stands out like a sore thumb. I mean, that looks real dumb to me. I really wish they would have chose a midsection that has a smoothed over belly button to resemble cloth. But either way here, I do like this look, and I think it's really cool to have the more iconic, kind of the more standard looking Molly Holly figure here. And I'll do a little comparison between her previous figure that I did review on the channel a long, long time ago. It was a Jax figure, so we'll look at that in a second here. But yeah, so this top is a metallic bluish silver. Remember, I'm colorblind. I have trouble here. But yeah, it's like a bluish silver. But I love, love, love that it is metallic. I'm glad that they did that. Definitely accurate. And it looks great. Minus the belly button. And then we have these little black triangular accents on the top. And if you look close, there's blue detailing around those black triangles. So that's really cool. And then the bottoms are the same as the regular version. And they're just all black bell bottoms here. So yeah, I am thinking out of the two, obviously, the standard stands out more. But I don't know. This is just such an iconic look for her. Alright, so now let's do a little comparison between all of Molly Holly's figures released so far. And isn't that mind-blowing that before these two elites, she only has had one figure released by WWE. And I believe it was all the way back in 2001. And that was by Jax. It was Rulers of the Ring Series 4, I believe. And I did do a full-length review on this figure a long time ago. And honestly... It's a pretty darn good figure. I think it's an excellent figure, and I am not a big fan of the Jax women's figures. I don't think they did a good job on the women at all, but this one definitely stood out as a good one here. I think the body sculpt is cool, even though it was reused multiple times on different females. I think it works here, and I think the face is okay, and the detail in the hair is pretty darn neat. So I definitely think this was a cool figure for the time, and I had it on my Women's of Legends shelf. But in my opinion, that's what this is, is a placeholder. I think you need to go out and get both of these versions of Molly, and this figure can, yeah, it can go bye-bye. And it's definitely going out of my collection. It was a nice placeholder because I wanted a figure representation of Molly for my Legend shelf. But now that I got these two, I really don't need this. If you're interested, let me know. Uh, it's out of my collection. See ya! So yeah, I think both of these figures are must-haves. You know, obviously the one that stands out the most, that is the most eye-catching and appealing visually, is the Mighty Molly or the regular release. But in my true opinion, I really do encourage everyone to try to get both versions because Molly is a legend and any fan of women's wrestling needs to have figure representation of Molly. And I think both these characters or gimmicks are just so important to the history of women's wrestling. And yeah, I really do suggest that you try to get a regular and a chase version in your collection because I think they're both equally as important and I love them. All right, I almost forgot articulation, so let's cover that. The head doesn't have a whole lot of movement. It is on a ball joint, but because the hair sculpt, like a lot of the women's figures, it kind of inhibits its motion. She can look right okay and look left okay, but as far as up and down, not so much. The shoulder is on a ball joint, can move in all different directions. She has this upper arm swivel. She has double jointed elbows, which allows maximum flexion. She has this upper torso joint, which can... Uh, flex the trunk pretty good extend back okay but not a whole lot of side to side motion there so the upper trunk motion is kind of inhibited here we also have a waist swivel the hip is on a ball joint ball joint can move in all different directions we have an upper thigh swivel here we have double jointed knees great motion there and then the foot can plantar flex down dorsi flex up and yeah that's it so the articulation is definitely the most articulated molly figure out there
<laughs> All right, so overall, I give WWE Legends Series 16, Molly Holly, or Mighty Molly, regular version, an overall score of an 8.5 out of 10. This is an excellent figure, and after all these years, this long wait to get a Mighty Molly figure, we finally have one. It almost gives me goosebumps because I've been waiting so long for a Mighty Molly figure. You know, my favorite male wrestler of all time is the Hurricane, so you can imagine how much I wanted this. And what they did here is a pretty good job. I think the cape accessory is excellent. I think the inclusion of the sculpted on tiara and also the paint application on the attire is superb. However, I'm not crazy about that face scan and face sculpt to be honest with you and also that dimpled belly button kind of bothers me. But for what we get here, I think it's a great representation. Now that being said, I give WWE Legend Series 16 Molly Holly the chase version an overall score of a 7 out of 10. The reason it's so much lower than the regular version is obviously the regular version makes up for the chase version with all the paint deco. And yes, I know the chase version does come with a cape, but you're not going to display this, this chase version with a cape, right? So it's kind of a wasted accessory, in my opinion, on the chase version. And I do think this is a nice, iconic attire. I think the paint application is clean. It looks good. But... When you have a simple attire on a wrestling figure, I like to see the extra effort on the little details. You know, go back to Elite 97, Ronda Rousey, and see all the little attention to details they put in that attire. It's kind of mind-blowing, right? And here, I'm still really bothered about this dimpled belly button. I wish it would have been smoothed over. I think that really would have helped the score. And also, if it was a better face scan and face sculpt, it would have improved the score as well. But in my opinion, my scores don't matter. And I almost didn't want to give these two figure scores because these are so important to my collection. And if you're a women's wrestling figure collector or even a collector of Legends figures, both of these are must, must, must buys. I've never wanted to recommend buying a figure so much than these two because, you know, they're not perfect figures, but they are awesome representations of Molly Holly. And she deserves to be in everyone's collection, in my opinion. So, yeah. Despite my scores, I love these figures. Thanks for stopping by Lumberjillville. Women's wrestling lives here. For a first look at all future women's wrestling figure reviews, make sure to hit subscribe and become an official resident of LJV today. Also, make sure to head on over to ringsidecollectibles.com and use coupon code LJV at checkout to save 10% on your next order of women's wrestling figures. Now, with that being said, I have a lot of women's wrestling figures coming this month and next month, like I mentioned, and it's been overwhelming the amount of reviews I've had to do, but I have to tell y'all, I've had a blast. I love this. I love collecting women's wrestling figures. I love making these videos, and I truly appreciate every single one of you that watches the video, that likes the video, that, that comments, that subscribes. It means the world to me, and I'm having the time of my life. So stay tuned, a lot of real exciting reviews coming next, including AEW Unmatched Series 5 Red Velvet. Now with that being said, have a great night, y'all.